Hey everybody, it's Gordon. Welcome to the bench. Today I'm working on a Stanley number one tote. New horn for this little guy. Stick around and I'll show you how I do it. So this is what we started with. It's a Stanley number one missing the horn. So in my traditional way, I glued this to an MDF sled, ran it across a table saw and created a nice flat surface. And then my little color matched Brazilian rosewood block, which I chose for this project, uh, was too hard and difficult to hold on to. So I actually glued it right to my vise and I glued some support material in there. It's not pretty, but it does the job. And then I was able to mix uh, System 3 G2 epoxy with a tint and then uh, match the angle. I leave it in for about 72 hours and it's fully cured. <clears throat> and then when it comes out, I have a block. And um, the only way to do this in my book is by hand. So I don't, I'm not using a, a Fordham or anything powered. I'm just using a coarse um, Japanese file. So this is an Iwasaki file. And as you watch me use my thumb as a guide, I'm protecting the original tote. I don't want to make any touches or any marks on the original. And I'm just knocking down the bulk of the rosewood. As you can also see by the sawdust there, this little file, which is like a thousand little plane blades, does such an aggressive job. Those are super sharp. And I love the Iwasaki files. It's a rasp, if you want to call it a rasp. Um, but you can see, you can almost see the granularity in the, in the sawdust there as I create um, rosewood shavings. Uh, on my bench, but um, it just takes that material off so clean and so crisp. I really, really like these files. I'll probably end up doing a video on just the Iwasaki lineup because I'm using several other products now. Sweep that rosewood dust aside and uh, keep my workspace clean. Here I've moved to a vise, so I'm holding on to it where I can use my hands a little bit uh, easier. And I'm working in dimension, so I'm looking straight down on it. And by that I mean, I, I don't really worry about all the contour and the shape, but I'm looking right straight down on the top. And I'm going for that kind of obular toenail shape here, thumbnail, whatever you wanna call it, thumb shape. And just trying to sneak up on the joint, which is really what my focus is at this point. I'm not too concerned about the actual length of it yet, and you'll see why in a minute. Again, Iwasaki files, safety back. And uh, now as I get a little bit closer, the, um, the rasp takes too much material. So what you're seeing here is just me getting nervous as I get closer. I moved to a traditional file, which is gonna take less material off uh, per stroke. Gives it a little bit different finish as well. And I've also wrapped the original tote with painter's tape. And that's going to protect that surface. Again, I don't want to nick the patina, even though we're going to have to blend it. Um, I just don't want to run the risk of cutting into the original. So now you know that painter's tape's a couple thousands thick. You're going to have to hit it eventually. So what that's telling me here as I get to this point is I'm really close with my file. And uh, I'm cutting through the tape, but not hitting the original tote. So we're sneaking up on it. Basically. So here now we've um, reached the tape and we're starting to work on the joint itself. If you're looking at my vise, you're seeing uh, a urethane sheet, which is what I use rather than just soft jaws. I like to wrap my parts in the urethane sheet. So this is a quarter inch thick. It's like a shore A40 barometer, I think, which is kind of the rating and softness. So urethanes go from, you know, super soft like a pencil eraser all the way to bowling balls. Um, which is super hard material. So I'm taking a really soft approach, which allows me to squeeze it. And then here we are with our joint that looks pretty close to done, but I'm not really paying attention to final dimension yet. We can always remove material. Um, we can't add it necessarily without starting over. So now it's sitting next to a number one with an existing tote. Taking a look at the um, just the visual comparison, we'll do some measurements for length to get the horn right. And then I have a collection of other little totes that we might use as a, also as a visual reference. And here you can see the two on the left, I think are the uh, later versions. So the one on the right is the early version, if I'm, if I'm right. But there was some variation 
in the Stanley number one tote, as you know, with many hand planes, they make types and did some changes along the way. So there's what I call the tall and the short, and this is gonna be a tall version. So now I'm at that point where I like the joint. I'm still protecting the original patina and the original tote with my hands, but I'm using the light on my bench and I'm using my file to kind of roll it and take kind of radial cuts and very, very fine slices along the way. And by keeping my bench clean, you'll see me use a scraper to kind of push that rosewood dust aside. I'm not just looking at the workpiece, but I'm also looking at the material that's laying on the bench. And that gives me a reference as to how much I'm taking off with each swipe. I don't actually use the rosewood sawdust. I know there's people out there that like to mix it with glue and use it as filler. And I'm more of a solid wood guy. So um, if somebody's interested in rosewood dust, I certainly have um, a supply. But here I'm just, again, I'm using the light in a series of files to bring in that final shape. I am looking at my references at the same time, so I'm not entirely just winging it here. And again, we're just taking our time, right? We can always take material off. It's a lot more difficult to add it. Um, and if I were to screw this up, I'd probably just cut the whole horn off and start over, but we don't wanna do that. We got a lot of time into it so far. So as we get close, I'm starting to think about the finish and the blend. And what I'll do is I'll use a piece of cardboard. So I already said I don't use sandpaper, which is true, but I do use um, cardboard. So that's gonna give me a finish um, very similar to a four out steel wool. It's like sandpaper, it actually has an abrasive property, but it burnishes a little bit at the same time too, and I'm not gonna get that sanded look. So I will, Throughout the course of this final step here, as I'm trying to make that joint go away, I'll burnish it with cardboard. And here again, you see me looking at the top, not happy. I'm just gonna keep scrubbing this thing in and taking it down and down until we can get that joint to go away. So we've got light reflection and some visual reference there. Um, I'm not real happy with the bottom joint there too. I see that transition. So out with the Iwasaki again, and this is a rasp, it's a conical, it's got a finer point, but it's a radius. Um, so it's kind of a cone shape with a safety back. So I'm gonna put my thumb down there and protect the original. I'm just letting the weight of the file do the work at this point, and I'm looking at the bench too. And again, here you can see what I'm removing. So at this point, it's just kind of back and forth, and I've shortened the video quite a bit for you, but taking my time. I'm super patient. I know if you don't have the patience, it's hard to do, but here's a close-up of Iwasaki. I'll give you a little picture in picture here too. You can see there's a slight undercut. There's some chip breakers that have been notched in there as well, but boy, do I love these files. I think I'm going to have to do a separate video just on Iwasaki. But again, now we're back to the burnishing. So I'm using cardboard um, if you just use a paper sack or a brown craft paper, I think it'll conform more to your finger. And so I like to use the, uh, the cardboard and it helps kind of level it out. Well, we've reached the end of our project and you can see now at this point, I've sprayed the top of it with a nitrocellulose lacquer. So there's still a little shine going on. I'll hit it with steel wool and a paste wax to even out the finish across the entire handle. And at this point, I'm going to call this one done. So. There was, the temptation was there. I had to take my own number one apart. So I put this on my plane for a final photo shoot. I hope you like this. I hope you learned something along the way. I would appreciate it if you would subscribe. I have a lot of videos coming up, some really exciting, fun stuff, and uh, educational as well. Give it a like. Please subscribe. Talk to you guys soon.